Here I'm going to cover what a macro is and the basics of how to create one, as well as giving you five examples that will get you started creating your very own macros. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Okay, so let's start at the very first step. What is a macro? A macro allows you to automate a task in Excel. It could do anything from formatting a cell to adding data to cells to taking data from cells. Anything that you can do in Excel with a mouse and a keyboard, you can do using a macro. So it's just automating tasks, essentially, and it makes Excel really, really powerful. In this tutorial, I'm not going to cover macro recording. So this is all about programming your own macros. That means the first step is to go to the VBA window. To do that, we use the keyboard shortcut Alt F11. It's going to take you to this window here, and this is where we're going to create our macros. Now, the first thing that you want to do is to insert a module. This is where the code will go. So go up here to the menu, insert, module, and then usually it's not going to be full screen like this. It'll be a window like this here. And now to create the macro, we first have to kind of make the outline for it, the box or the container. So we type sub, space, and then the name of the macro. Let's call this one selections and data. Then just hit enter, and it should automatically fill in the end sub and then open and closing parentheses here. Now for just starting with macros, I'm not going to cover what you could put in between these parentheses or anything outside the sub and end sub. Let's just stick with the very basics. The one thing that is important to note is you can't have any spaces up here in the name. So that's going to throw an error. So just leave it at simple, easy to read names. If you want, you could use underscores. But that's not really necessary. So let's get started. I'm going to have five examples here, and each one will have a comment above it that explains what it's going to do. A comment is what you put into your macro so you can better understand it when you view it later. You put a comma in with a single quotation mark. So this is a comment. And once you hit enter and go to the next line, it will turn green. That's how you know it's a comment. First thing, let's select a cell. Now there are a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to show you the easiest and most intuitive way. Simply type range, open parentheses, double quotation mark, and then the cell to which you want to navigate. Let's say cell C2. Close quote, close parentheses, then type a period. And now this is very interesting. The little window here is everything you can do with this range. Here, we're going to keep it very simple type select, hit enter, and now we have created our very first macro that is going to select cell C2. Now if you want, you can run the macro from here, hit the green arrow up here in the toolbar, or hit F5, but let's go back to the workbook and run it from there. So we hit Alt F11 to go back to the workbook, now hit Alt F8 to go to the macro window. This will show you all the macros available to you in this workbook or any open workbook. Select the macro. We named it selections and data. Then hit run. And you see that the cell that was selected is C2. So I'm going to select another cell. Watch that again. Alt F8. Run the macro. Watch the active cell change. Bam your very first macro. Let's go back to the window, Alt F11. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out each example once I've finished it. So I put a single quotation mark, and that means that this code will no longer run. So it will no longer select range C2. When you're viewing this workbook, simply remove the single quote, and then you can run that code. So for the next one, let's select a range. Very simple, just like the first example, except for we type a range in there. So let's say A1 to C2.
Alt F11, Alt F8, run, and now it's selected an entire range. So you can see that using range is really intuitive, really easy to use. A single cell, just type in the cell, a range, type in the range. It's very similar to how you would do a formula inside of a cell, so it's easy to remember. Now let's comment that out and go to the next example. Here I'm going to show you how to change worksheets. So let's say navigate to another worksheet. This very simple. Remember, you're going to another worksheet, a sheet. So we can use the word sheets, open parentheses, quotation mark, and now the name of the other sheet. So the name of the sheet within quotation marks, then a period, then simply type activate. Now let's test it out. Alt F11, Alt F8, run the macro. And you can see we're now on sheet two. So you want to put the name of the worksheet in there, the name that's visible on the tab here. There are other ways to access the worksheets where you use their index number, but using the name visible on the tab is more intuitive and easier, especially when you're starting out. So just sheets, then the name of the sheet within quotation marks, then activate. Now let's comment that out. Move on to the next example. Now, oftentimes you want to do something on a cell that a user has selected. So you want to select the currently active cell. Let's do something that's common here. Let's offset the active cell. So first thing, we need to tell the macro that we want to work with a cell that is currently selected. How do we do that? Active cell. It is as simple as that. Now we put a period. What do we want to do with the active cell? We can do so many things. In this case, let's simply do an offset. So let's say user selects cell A1, and we want it to automatically do something with the same row, but a different column, or with a cell that's two down and two to the right. So basically, we are offsetting. So we type offset, open parentheses, the first argument, the row. So how many rows away do we want to offset it? Let's make it go down one row. How many columns to the right? Let's make it go two columns to the right. And so we can see what's happening. Let's use select. So now here, what we are doing is we are telling the macro, do something with the active cell, the cell that has been selected by the user. What do we want to do? Let's offset it. Let's offset it by one row and two columns. Now, once we've offset that, what do we want to do with that new cell? Let's select it. Let's go ahead and try it out. Alt F11. I'm going to select a random cell. Now let's hit Alt F8. Run the macro. Watch it change from C8 to E9. Perfect. So it offset down one over two. Try it again. As simple as that. And if you want, you can offset it negative. So let's make it go back one row and over two columns to the left. Now it's back to cell A1. If you run it like this when it's already in cell A1 and try and take it off of the worksheet, you're going to get an error. Hit debug and it takes you to the line of the code that caused the error. When you're done looking at that, thinking, hmm, what went wrong? Oh, it went off the worksheet area. Okay, you can hit the stop button up here to reset the code and continue working on it. What I'm going to do real quick is copy this so you can have both examples going negative and going positive. This is one of the most important things that you're going to have to do in Excel is to use the offset just like this, especially on active cells. It's going to allow a user to select a cell in a row and then the macro can do something with each individual cell in that entire row 
without knowing its actual address. It's just going to offset it from the cell that was selected by the user or the cell that was selected by the macro through another search process. There's lots of reasons you want to use offset, so definitely try and remember that. Now let's comment this out and move on to the next and last set of examples. Here I'm going to show you how to put data into cells. This is building off the last example, so let's start with the very first one, active cell. That's going to do something with the cell that we select. So what do we want to do with the active cell? Let's change the value of that cell. That's how you change the contents of a cell. That's also how you get the contents of the cell, is you type value. Then equal sign. Let's just put a simple high in there. Now Alt F11. Let's select our cell, Let's say A1. Alt F8, run the macro. And it puts the text high in there. Perfect. Any cell you select, the same thing will happen. Now let's go back, Alt F11, and let's do some more examples. Next, let's put a value in a very specific cell. Well, you know how to select a cell, so all we're going to do is change the select to the value. So up here, remember, this is how you select a cell. And the first part is going to stay the same. It's this part that tells the macro that we want to do something with this cell. In the first example, we just told the macro to select it. So let's go with cell B2. What do we want to do? We want to change the value. What do we want to change it to? Let's change it to hey there. So once again, we use range, B2, value, hey there. Alt F11, F8, run. And now we've got text in cell B2. Now let's combine the examples to put text in a cell on another worksheet. To do that, you first tell the macro what worksheet you want to use. We want to use sheet two. Then you put a period. Then you tell it what cell in that worksheet. So we're basically just stacking the first few examples. Well, let's do it on cell C5. So first, what worksheet? Second, what range? There's no space in here, even though it looks like there's a space right there. Everything is together. Now at the end, we still have to tell it what to do. Right, let's change the value. And let's put more text. Now, when you do it like this, you do not have to select the other worksheet. So you'll notice when we go back to the workbook, we're still on sheet one here. Hit Alt F8, run. And now on sheet two, C5, more text. You do not have to select the worksheet or select the cell in order to work with it. We simply used the examples of selecting cells and ranges earlier and activating the worksheets so you can see how it works. So you can see how you work with the worksheets like this and how you work with the ranges like that. But by no means do you have to select it and you really shouldn't be selecting it and activating worksheets just to put data into them. The only reason you want to select something or activate something is to make it more intuitive for the user. Let's comment this out now and use an example with offsets. So let's offset the active cell. Let's offset it by two and two. So down two over two, change the value to offset, baby. Hit Alt F11, Alt F8. Now it should go over two and down two. Perfect. So now I've got sheet one with these examples and sheet two. So here are all of our examples now.
We started out with a very simple way to select the cells, then how to select the range, then how to select or go to another worksheet, then how to offset the current selection, and then how to combine all of that in order to put data into an active cell, the cell that's been selected, a specific cell, a specific cell on a worksheet, or a cell so many cells away from the one that has been selected. That's all I'm going to cover in this tutorial, but it should help to give you a really good jump start on making macros in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.